we go through the ethics of this, we appeal to uh, those economists who are at the philosophy, philosophical end of economics. There's quite a strong indication in the subject on that, that uncertainty of existence is a reason for pure time discount rating, pure time discounting, but the other reason for pure time discounting, pure time discounting are wrong. Um, let me emphasize again, not to lose the economists amongst you, that the growth story for discounting is real and strong and in the techniques that we use. Okay, who would like to ask the question, first question from the floor here? Um, and can you identify yeah. yourself at least when you do so? Julian Braithwaite from the British Embassy in Washington. Um, another uh, comment that's uh, been made, uh, particularly in the US, is that you have been using science that isn't part of the established uh, sort of corpus of science that uh, people have been basing climate change modelling on uh, uh, recently. What is your response to that? Uh, it, it's just not true. Um, we, um, there's a climate science denial industry, which many of you will be aware of. Um, um, but the kinds of science that we used, which are basically, basically the key science that we use are the probability uh, distributions for temperature associated with stocks of greenhouse gases. That's the key point. And we use the, um, uh, the tables that were developed by a chap called Mindshausen. It's published in the book of... Um, Avoiding Dangerous Climate Change, which came out of the Exeter Conference of last year, and uh, that's basically the foundation of what we're doing. So we regard our use of the science as actually pretty standard. I mean, you can argue vigorously about the economics, and uh, I would not want the kinds of uh, numbers that we've um, been talking about, 5 to 20 percent, to be seen as... Uh, in any sense of final word. They depend on assumptions about risk, they depend on assumptions about uh, discounting and so on, and those should be robustly uh, discussed. And I can think of reasons why they should be bigger, maybe other people can think of reasons why they should be smaller. Certainly if you increase the pure time discount rate, they would be smaller. But that kind of discussion is absolutely fair game. But on the science one, uh, you know, we've just rooted ourselves in the, what we regard as the established science and indeed what the Royal Society and other societies uh, regard as the established science. So if anybody's questioning that, all we can do is refer them to their own scientific establishments. Next question. Could you show it for the mic? Yeah. Uh, Paul Haygreen. Um, one of the key contributors to climate change is um, power generation. And there's obviously massive economic implications one way or the other there. I was surprised your report, um, let's say this, paid limited attention to the economic implications of different means of power generation, be that nuclear, renewables, fossil fuels and so on. I mean, that's probably one of the most contentious debates apropos of the whole climate change subject. Uh, what are your views on... Um, on the means of generation we should be deploying and the economic implications, be that the, um, um, the economic cost of the actual building of the plants, the running cost, and so on and so forth. How do you view that subject? Yeah. Uh, there is actually a fair bit in the, uh, uh, in the report, both in, <laughs> both in parts two and part three, on the technology. So I don't think it's quite right that we didn't pay attention to the technological opportunities. We try to be reasonably uh, neutral about the possibilities, but we do discuss the different kinds of costs associated with photovoltaics, uh, with wind, with nuclear and so on, and how they might come down over time. But the position we take as between them, with one exception, which I'll come back to in just a moment, but the position we take as between them is that if you set the carbon incentives right, it should, over time, be the markets which uh, choose which of them is the uh, most cost-effective way of um, doing low-carbon uh, power. Um, we do, of course, as I just emphasized, talk about research and development and the, uh, um, the kinds of incentives for deployment that might be appropriate. And you would want to think about, if you're giving incentives for deployment or R&D, you would want to think about encouraging those things that 